divisions lighter in a clash of undefeated junior welterweights, Juan Arango and mighty Mike Arno Otis in a bout scheduled for 12. Juan Arango was born in Colombia, now lives in Miami, and fought for the first time in the U.S. last month in this same arena when he won a unanimous six-round decision. He beat Miguel Cotto in the amateurs and won five Colombia national titles. Arango turned pro a little over two years ago. He's 23, a southpaw pressure fighter, works the body well, and is 13-0 with 10 knockouts. Steve, take us behind the numbers. Well, Juan Arango's war stories. You'd think that fighting almost exclusively in Colombia and Spain, Arango would have faced softer opposition than Arno Udis. Not so. In his last bout, Arango outlasted Sergei Sorokin, who was 15-0-1 in a war. Eight times two. Arango's been eight rounds twice, while Arno Udis has never been past six. Slight advantage, Arango. And legit power? Arango has an impressive KO record, yes. But of the four fighters he's faced with winning records, he stopped only one. Well, mighty Mike Arnaudis will be a tough guy to nail cleanly simply because he moves so well. Arnaudis is 24, was born in Athens, Greece, and now trains and lives in Atlantic City, New Jersey. He won 103 of 110 amateur bouts and turned pro over three years ago. He's also a southpaw, has flashy hand speed, slick movement, and will look to dictate the fight behind his jab. Mike Arnaudis, 10 0 and 1 with four KOs. Steve, what's behind those numbers? Well, for Arnaudis, this is a first test. So far, he's been perfect and protected. His two most experienced opponents have been Juan Polo Perez, who had lost 11 of his previous 12, and Marty Robbins, who had dropped four of his previous five. Boxer, strictly. Don't look for power from this lefty. Mighty Mike went the distance in defeating the aforementioned Polo Perez and Robbins who had suffered a combined 22 previous losses by stoppage. And lefty versus lefty, Arnaudis and Arango are both southpaws. In his last bout, Arnaudis fought a fellow lefty in Robbins. That could turn out to be a slight advantage tonight. Two southpaws face off on our opening bout here in Hollywood, Florida, when Juan Arango meets mighty Mike Arnaudis in a junior welterweight bout scheduled for 12 rounds. Ring announcer Damian Pinto has the introductions now. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you as we welcome you to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. It's Showbox, the new generation, and it's all brought to you by Duva Boxing and Warriors Boxing Promotions Incorporated in association with the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino of Hollywood, Corona Bear, La Cerveza Masfina, and Showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's action is sanctioned by the Florida Boxing Commission. Your executive Executive Director Jason Penley. Your attending ringside physicians, Dr. Alan Fields and Dr. Stanley Simpson. Introducing to you the judges scoring at ringside. Presenting to you the judges at ringside from Miami, Florida, Rick Bays. From Orlando, Florida, Alex Levin. And from Coral Springs, Florida, Peter Tremetera. And ladies and gentlemen, the man in charge of the action, when the bell rings, your referee, Frank Centaur Jr. All right, fight fans, here we go. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds for your vacant NABO Jr. Welterweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting tight and out of the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing white trunks trimmed in blue and weighed in at 139 one half pounds. He takes an undefeated record of 10 victories, no defeats, one draw into the ring this evening, four big victories coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Athens, Greece, by way of Atlantic City, New Jersey, introducing mighty Mike Arnatti. His opponent stands opposite in the corner to my left, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He wears the black trunks and weighed in at 139 fighting pounds. He also takes an unblemished record of 13 big wins and no defeats into the ring this evening. Ten big victories coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cordova, Colombia, Introducing your red corner, Juan Elmeo Urango. Now here is your referee with your last minute instructions, Frank Centaur Jr. Three, 
we go. Poor. All right, guys, we're going to earth and dress room. Both your trunks are just about right. Let's keep the blows here above. Remember, there's no standing eight counts, all right, gentlemen? No three knockdown rule, all right? Questions, questions. Good luck. Touch them up, guys. You see the tail of the tape. Mike Arnaudis with advantages in height and weight. If he doesn't use them, he will lose them. And he will use them tonight. Well, you heard the referee Frank Santori Jr. talk about no three knockdown, no standing eight. Can't be saved by the bell in any round. Only Santori can stop the fight. And wiping some of the grease off right now from Juan Arango's face in the corner as a slight delay. We're about to begin here in Hollywood, Florida. Arango's ready. Arna Udis ready. And we are ready to go. 12 rounds or less. Arna Udis, both left handers here, but it's Arango coming out completely square. Oh, he hit, look at his body, Nick. I mean, this guy, Arango, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a junior welter built like this guy. I mean, his trapezoids are huge. 10 seconds into the fight, I'm impressed. Both guys really smoking the jab. And Steve, obvious question. Righty against lefty is tough, but two lefties really nullify that advantage. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we know Arno Udis has fought a lefty. Orango says he's fought a lefty. Uh, it's a fight that happened in Spain. We can't be sure the opponent was a left-hander, but neither guy experienced against fellow lefties, but as you said, it should be nullified, the advantage. Orango's in the black, and Arno Udis's camp knows that he's going to come out smoking, really go fast. And they think that if Arnoudis could move well on him and frustrate him and make him follow rather than cut the ring off, he may run out of bullets and gas midway through. Because it is 12, and they've never been close to that far, as you mentioned. Yeah, that, that could be a very big factor later on. Oh, whipping right hands from Urango in black. Man, he's punching with conviction, and now he swallows nice counter punches from Arnoudis. Two things I could tell you about Mike Arnaudis. One, ring generalship is his game. Two, this is a cocky kid. I mean, he's quite sure of himself. He may be inexperienced, but he's got a lot of presence in the ring. I just like his mental concentration. He's got to got to outthink this guy because he doesn't look like he's the stronger guy. <laughs> oh, he is not a stronger junior out there than Arango in the world. Quite a statement. Well, I'm speaking strictly. <laughs> I mean, if we were doing a bench, pr yes. bench uh, pressing contest, I'm betting on Arango. He is winging some shots now, Arango. He's in jet black coming forward throughout this fight. And now the power punches evaded nicely Wait. by Arna Udis. Fails to stick in a counter, but ties up Arango just to kill that momentum, Steve. Well, it's definitely in the best interest of Arango to bang the body. Don't go for the head early because it's a long fight, and Arnaudis depends so much on his mobility. Chop down the tree slowly. Rango sticking the jab in beautifully, and now gets drilled by a couple of counters from Arnaudis and White. Arnaudis got to get off the ropes. He tries to slug with Arango, and the crowd gets into this one quickly. Well, you look at the first round. Arnaudis' punches get there faster. Arango's wider shots, you see how wide they are. Uh, but they have power. Arnaudis unwisely stuck in the corner. Stop. Break. Lindo. And that could have been enough for Arango to clearly take that first heat. Keep that jab working like you got it working. Taking them both ways. And get your left hand in the mix. The left hand gonna show. Off your left hand, I want that right hand to the body, all right? Okay, baby. Now, now, now don't the get pressure in round one from Juan Orango. Big wide shots, but you know what? As long as Arno Udis is stationary. He's not going to win this fight because Arango is so strong and those big wide shots will land and they'll have an effect. No matter where they land, they'll have an effect. Steve, blistering pace first round. If they got to go deep here, that should have an effect. 
Arango comes out barreling forward once again and swinging for the fences. It's our Ar Arnaudas uh, trained by Bill Johnson. Yeah, who instructed him to fire in combinations get that you keep that jab working and Bill Johnson comes from some boxing pedigree doesn't he Steve? yeah his son is Lavander Johnson who's one of the top lightweights in the world Rango behind a very tight guard waits on that jab from Arna Udis and comes back with a looping right hand of his own here he comes barreling forward again cracking to the ribs of Arna Udis Arna Udis though with an answer of his own, and now they're slugging, and the crowd is on its feet here. Urango driving Arnaudis and White back. But the Greek keeping his composure, Steve. Well, Arnaudis is looking for one left-hand counter. He's having trouble opening up Arango for the jab, because as you said, Arango's very tucked in, very tight, tight guard, chin tucked. And he's not landing a lot of jabs, but the left hand is going to be the answer for Arnaudis when Arango is wide open, punching himself. Arango burying shot for the body of Arnaudis, but Arnaudis with a good answer of his own, countering, spinning off the ropes. He is in white and in the black, the man who is trying to stalk him down. And Arango doing a great job, Steve, of not just following. He is definitely forcing Arnaudis to fight. For sure, and uh, you got to love the pace here, and you have to love the clash of styles. Oh, body shots by Arango. It's great strategy, Steve. You take the legs away, obviously, because Arnaudis is a slick mover. Nice counter from Arnaudis, and then he's not there to be countered again as Arango relentless in coming forward. Arnaudis sticks that left hand, a right hand in first, and then gets out. Well, of course, the irony here is that Arnaudis is the boxer. He wants to box and use the jab, but he's going to land that left hand best, most accurately, and most with the most force when Arango is attacking him, and he's in the danger zone. Just did that, Steve. Nice belt to the body by Arnaudis. Arnaudis punching and getting out, but now on the ropes, once again, and getting hammered. Another brisk round inside the 32nd mark. Crowd really into it here in Hollywood, Florida. And why not? Two junior welterweights going at it. That was a slip by Arnaudis, and Urango smelled a little hesitancy and leaped on him. And, Ar and, and Arnaudis slipped on the pillow on the ring, the advertisement. That's my pet peeve. Somebody's going to get seriously hurt on one of those things one of these days. A wing shot just before the bell. three jabs and then dig to the body you can't miss stop going wild give me the good body. action in round two as i said arnaudis is going to land his best shots when he's under the most pressure because that's when arango is not protecting himself in that turtle-like defense both guys landed big shots in the second round a lot better round for arnaudis but he still got hit quite a bit and the guy in arango's corner with the instructions former Light heavyweight champion of the world, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Fight a little bit more under control is basically what he told Arango. Don't be so wild. Move in behind the jab and be a little bit more evasive. So let's see if we see some head movement from Arango because Arnaudis Ar 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 is doing a good job of picking him off. Arnaudis is in white. Juan Arango from Colombia. Now living in Miami with a huge contingent here of fans. Basically on his home turf is in the black. Arnaud is moving mostly to his right. And interesting, Arango is southpaw also, but he's a natural right-hander. He should have a good right hand, a good right hook in addition to this jab. We haven't really seen that many right hooks yet. There's one. 
Steve Arango clearly is more powerful, but Arna Udish has impressed me. He can really stick some shots. Getting driven back here, though. And Arna Udish marked over the left eye. Don't know if he's cut or it's just an abrasion or what. Face is red. Uh, he eats a, a, a right hand there from Arango. Yeah, that looks like a cut, Nick. Yeah. There goes Arango, creasing Arnudas to the body, and barreling in behind combinations now. The experience of these two guys virtually identical. This is a classic showbox matchup. Two young guys, both undefeated. One of them's going to take a step forward, presumably, tonight. And it's a real nice style matchup. But remember, it's 12 rounds. That could be the deciding factor in the fight. Arnudas gets smacked with a counter from Urango and he is bleeding inside above the uh, left eyebrow. He Urango relentless with that lead body shot. Now he goes upstairs with a right hand. They've hardly had a break him, Steve. A lot more movement this round from Arna Udis. Arna Udis taking solid shots from Urango and then firing back. So he's still got plenty of zip left. But man, they are going at a fairly rapid clip. Wall to wall, bell to bell. In the third of a scheduled 12 rounder. Steve's gonna Rango keep this kind of pace up. Well, if he lands any more shots like that, he won't have to fight too much longer, I'll tell you that. Rocking Arna Udis with Arna some Udis shots. Back with a left. And a show of respect as they touch gloves. Give me some water on this. Give me some water on this. Now what's the hardest way? Oh, you're working good. You're working good. You're working good. Let's see how you make Listen, Matt, don't go on the ropes. Keep your back off the ropes, all right? Keep your back off the ropes. Okay. Now you're going one way. Taking both ways now. Don't keep going one way. When you step back to your when you step back to your left, throw your throw your left straight left hand and hook off it. Breathe, breathe. All right. Let him breathe. Let him breathe. Now. This is Nick, no fight. He's, he's 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 looking at. He's ready for that breathe, right breathe, hand. Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Off your jab. Breathe. Off your straight breathe. left hand. Throw your right hook there. It's there. Okay. When if there was any fight, doubt, who took this third round? Watch the very end of the round. That was almost a knockout type punch. A big right hand by the natural right hander, Juan Arango. Steve, seems like a bit of a dilemma for Arna Udis. They want him to fire in combination, but if he is, he's going to be there to get hit again. His original strategy, you know, maybe come in behind the jab with a power shot and get out. But now if you got to hang in there and slug with this guy, he could be in trouble. Well, you're right. I'll tell you what. What it might come down to for Arna Udis is, is his chin good enough? And can he land enough left hands to slow Arango down? The 12-round distance, I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to favor Arna Udis. Arango's new to America, new to training techniques. His management told us everything's new to him here. And he wasn't eating properly, he wasn't training properly until he came to America. This fight might be a little too soon for him. But pace doesn't seem to be in his repertoire. <laughs> As is the case with most punchers. <laughs> Juan Arango misses wildly and gets tattooed with a left counter from Arna Udis. Both unbeaten fighters here. Arango in black and in the white is Mighty Mike Arna Udis. Arna Udis keeping his head. As shots go whistling by and Arango still wild with those punches trying to clear the bases. Udis really waiting to counter here. And his movement is solely to the right. Now he gets there first. <laughs> but of Whips course, that, le that lead right hand. With Arnudis's movement to the right, that means Arango's moving to the right. So both guys are moving toward the power hand of their opponent. Although I'll tell you what, Arango <laughs> has two hands for power. Arnudis has one. Arnudis against the rope, showing some slick movement to avoid danger there. 
Now with that two punch combination. But his corner imploring Mighty Mike, he's got to string two and three shots together to blunt this guy's attack because the Colombian in black has been unmoved. Whoa, he got stopped in his tracks there, it looked like. And he got mad, Steve. Big left hands, neither one connected. That could have been a key moment right there because both of them loaded up their best shots. Wow. Each guy really, really winging shots here. Lorango banging to the body and connecting. Most of those shots blocked there at the end. Showtime Championship of Boxing returns on Saturday, this Saturday, August 7th, with one of the most highly charged, anticipated matchups of the year. America's Fight Night is on Showtime with the boxing event everyone is talking about. Saturday, it's the rebroadcast of the fight that shocked the world. Mike Tyson, Danny Williams. Everyone expected an action-packed fight. Tyson, left hook to the jaw. Now back comes Williams. They expected an early knockout. A left uppercut staggers Williams. Tyson in some difficulty. They got just that in the biggest upset of the year. It's over. Danny Williams has upset Mike Tyson. Also, the most anticipated fight of the summer is finally here. Asselino Freitas, Diego Corrales, the two best lightweights in the world, collide for the championship title. Saturday at 9 p.m. It's America's Fight Night on America's number one boxing network. Join Steve Albert and Al Bernstein for that one. It will be a hot night this Saturday night only on Showtime. Here we go to round five. A blistering pace here. Mighty Mike Arnaudis in white and in the black, Juan Arango. Nick, I'm real impressed with these two guys because they're both pretty new to the pro game. Arnaudis never been past six rounds. Orango doing all his fighting in Spain and Colombia against nondescript opposi opposition. They both look like pro boxers. I mean, like good pro season pro boxers. Will they look this way in rounds 9, 10, 11 if it goes that far? Steve, how do you have it through four? 39 37, Orango. So Ar Arnaudis in that uh, respite, the one minute that he sorely needed it looked like since he took a hammering to the body his corner wants him to go to the body now he shakes off what looks like a blast there goes the jab as he triples it up and now he wants the crowd to get in it as he taunts the crowd and taunts Arango who's getting labeled by those easy shots from Arnaudis as Arango just seems to get even madder there blasting away at the body with those right hands and swinging wildly and missing with the left, but he tags Arnaudis on the chin with another right. Well, Arnaudis is tripling up on his jab. Great way to score with the punch. Also, a dangerous way because you can get counted so easily when you're sticking your right hand out there for that long. Steve, if Arnaudis is behind in this fight, you, and you're implying that he's counting on some rounds to, and for Yorango to slow down, what else should he be doing differently at this point? Well, obviously he has to stay off the ropes. That's number one. Because every time he's been there, he's been hit with big body shots where he hasn't been hit with those shots in ring center. Keep moving also. Keep moving. There he answers back beautifully. And that blunted Durango's attack for a while. And that's what you got to do. Discourage the guy from moving forward. And Arno Udis with a rapid fire combination did just that. But there he is on the ropes again. And there he is absorbing shots, body and head. Oh, both men have each other's respect. Nice left hand by Arno Udis as Urango backs off momentarily and gets clipped with another left hand. Arno Udis putting that speed in motion now. And now Arno Udis going to the body for the first time in the fight. As his corner asked. And the crowd loving it. Arno Udis takes a shot to the ribs, backs off again wisely, and punctures Urango. Ir with a body shot of his own. You gotta go like a face up. Your head. Good that. 
fifth round go back to that quickly. Wow. This fight is flying. Relax. Okay, listen. All we gotta do is three, four jabs and stay to the body. He can move the head all day. He cannot move the body. Okay, listen, come here, to the body. Action from round five, I'll tell you, for a guy who's supposed to be a pure boxer, Mike Arnoudis has had some real good offensive moments trading with Orango. But here, Arnoudis against the ropes, gives his opponent a lot of chances to land big body shots. I'll tell you, though, that left hand by Arnoudis was his best punch of the fight. Steve, he looks so solid in terms of technical foundation. But the one thing he hadn't been able to do is control this distance, and he just can't stop the charging Arango. And I thought his jab would be able to do that. His speed and jab would enable him to do that. Boy, again, this fight is flying by. We're in the sixth. Arnoudis is in the white. Backing up as he has been most of the fight, but still standing and trading right now. Arango trying to walk his man down, doubling his jab, and that's what Eddie Mustafa Muhammad wanted, and then body shots. Arango has not been short in that supply of shots to the body. Here comes Arango forward again. Arnoud is trying to stick just little combinations, clip his guy, maybe kill that momentum a little bit, touch him, touch him, come back with counters like that. Arango has stopped punching as much, and perhaps this blistering pace is beginning to show. Arango walking in without punching. You know, Arnoud is doing a good job of picking him off. He's just pot shotting him now. Well, this is two different fights, Nick. One through six is one fight. Seven through 12 is a different fight entirely because of their inexperience of going the distance. And because, let's face it, Arango throws big shots. He's a heavily muscled guy. That does not lend itself well to going long when you're throwing a lot of punches. I know it is so impressive that he's able to fight backing up and counter that way. Just a superb job by him to control this round. And I'll tell you, the lefty versus lefty oh. factor here is nullified because they're both southpaws, but Arnoudis is moving almost exclusively to the right. He's the boxer, and he's being chased. And Orango's cutting off the ring as best he can. He's had mixed success doing it. So the southpaw factor, I don't think is that important in this fight now. Oh, I, I agree. I think they've nullified each other in that, but I love Arnoudis taking that little half step back and nailing Arango like that. And then avoiding those home run shots, the big power shots from the Colombian. Arnaud is pulling himself certainly back into this fight nicely here in the sixth. And as Steve Farr had mentioned, this is a two-part fight. Arnaud has never been past six. Orango's been eight twice. They have never been close to the scheduled 12 rounds that this night potentially holds. Good ice, baby. Oh, easy, baby. Easy. I'm doing it with my hand. Give that inch well. You got it. It's, it's, good. it's good. It's good. You got the inch well there? No, no, no. Okay, Mike. How you feel, baby? You got this, Mike. You got this, Mike. You good, man? Keep working the same way, baby. Don't nap out there now. Keep your focus, Mike. All right. Keep your jab live. Double it up. Straight left hand. Straight left hand. As this fight progresses, will Juan Orango slow down? You see the big wide shots. 
You know what? That big wide shots and our nudists seems to see them coming, but he's still getting hit by them. And that's not a good sign. Steve, we head to the seventh. That means we're potentially halfway home. And how's your card read? Dead even, 57-57. It's a new fight now, Nick, 7 through 12. Wow, and swelling above the left eye of Mike Arnautis. Of course, could be a factor. He is getting banged with those right hands from Juan whose punch rate has gone down a little bit. But the first four rounds from Arango and Black were absolutely torrid. Now just arm punches from him. Arnold is doing a good job of killing the Colombian's momentum, but now he's on the ropes. Well, <laughs> we know these guys haven't been 12, that's for sure. But even going seven or more, new to Mike Arnaudis, Arango 2-0 in eight-round fights. It's just a classic stylistic matchup, Steve, and two fighters both looking sharp, unbeaten, letting it go. One thing I like about Arango, he has maintained the same boxing stance and, and uh, posture. His hands have been up pretty much the whole fight. His right hand starting to drop now a little bit. Could be a big factor, especially after he jabs, because he'll be countered with a straight left. You know, Steve, I know I was looking at him. I said, this guy fights at one pace, but man, it's a lot faster than I figured. He is relentless in there, tearing into Arnoudis. Arnoudis with the body shots. Arnoudis is in white. Soft combination from him and evading those big shots from Irango, who sneaks in that left hand this time. And he gets countered beautifully by a left hand from Arnoudis. That wakes Arango up and the crowd. Great to hear the crowd so into this thing. Oh, why not? Why not huh? And Arango is the local guy. Arnudis lives in uh, near Atlantic City. The fans are for Arango, but you know, watching the pace of this fight, I get the impression that even when Arango doesn't land cleanly or to a good part of the body or head, he moves Arnudis. He's so strong. It doesn't matter where he hits him, it's going to be effective and it's going to take its toll. Well, fight fans, 11 o'clock here, almost midnight in Florida. No prospects when they see him. And both these guys know how to fight. They've impressed me immensely. Here in the seventh, scheduled for 12. Arnudis is on the ropes again. Here comes Arango, pressing forward. Cornering his man and chasing Arnudis, and his hands are low, but Arnudis just barrels back with shots of his own. You can see the intent of Irango's punches, Steve. Right. Not as straight, right. though, as Ar Arnoudis. I will be surprised if Irango can throw these huge shots in volume in the last three or four rounds. Four years ago, we said we changed the course of boxing history. Francisco Bojano, Ricky Hatton. Kermit Citron. The critics say it's the way boxing used to be and should be. Rocky Juarez, Jeff Lacey, Juan Diaz. Great for fighters, great for fans. Leo Doran, Rico Hoy, Ishi Smith. Showbox, the new generation has produced world champions, top contenders, and countless rising prospects. Before they're superstars, they're on Showbox, the new generation where boxing history begins. Join us for our next boxing doubleheader when undefeated Matt Vanda faces Armando Velarde. Then unbeaten Ben Dunn meets Adrian Valdez in the main event. Thursday, August 19th, 11 p.m., only on Showtime. Steve, I'm going to mention his name, Frank Santori Jr., just because I haven't had to mention his name for seven rounds. I love it. Does that, that's a very telling figure. The referee has not been involved in this fight. You got it. You know, Arnaudis is a boxer. <laughs> when he gets pressured, he could be grabbing and holding. He's not doing that. You're he's right. moving, but he's not clinching, and he's not really running, and I give him credit for that. Beautiful fight, but the swelling seems to be increasing. Over the left eye of Mike Arnaudis in white. Rango showing no signs of caving in, maybe slowing down a bit, gets beaten to the punch there once and twice. Arna Udis, very clever, what movement, very slick, continues to turn his man and run him into some shots. Oh. 
Good combination. Nice left hand stuck by Ar Arnautis. And now it's Arango looking for an opening, eating a couple of jabs, and then that right to the ribs. I like it when Arnautis goes to the body, Nick. He's been very effective with that. And, you know, we talk about Arango bringing Arnautis' movement, slowing it. Hey, Arnautis can bring Arango's hands down even more with those body shots. Steve, he's not necessarily getting terribly outgunned. He's a fairly strong puncher, Arnautis, showing a little bit more strength than I have envisioned. I think his left hand has a decent amount of power. His jab does not have a lot of power. It's really a quick jab. Again, you're scoring a close fight on your cards, and it really depends on quality, quantity, the whole bit, and uh, what judges like best. Zarango throwing definitely the harder shots. But fewer of them now. Yes. Oh, that's the way you counter. Great movement from Arnautis, and then doubling on that left hand as Arango failed to fire back. Real guts on the part of the Greek here as he takes the best Arango has to offer and answers with shots of his own. But is he winning or losing this round? <laughs> I think Arnautis has come on pretty well the last couple of rounds. I think he's getting hit less. And you mentioned Arnautis Greek born in uh, in Athens. And uh, there's only been one Greek born world champion in the history of boxing. That was Anton Christophorides, who was light heavyweight champ in the early 40s. You would know that. Well, Steve Farhood. Can't say I saw him fight, but. <laughs> oh, nice left hand over the top by Arango as he straightens his shots, but there he's open for a counter, and Arna Udis has made him pay repeatedly. Spirited eighth round. Don't grab him. Everybody time out. Ask him, do he want this belt? You have to put more pressure on this man behind your jab, moving your head. When you get him on the rope, don't go to the head, go to the body. He's moving his head pretty good, but he can't move the body like that. Okay, well, give me the body punching. Hit the body, Mick, when it's there. You got to hit the body some too, all right? Okay. Don't reach down for it and keep those hands up. Don't stand in front of it. Well, we know the primary target here, Steve, from, from both corners. Go to the body. Crowd loves it. Fighters love it. And they respect each other, and why not? They get flat out fights, Steve, for prospect guys who want to be prospects. And Nick, I keep waiting for these guys to really slow down. Now, granted, Arango's not throwing as Steve. many punches as he was, but the pace of this fight really hasn't slowed that much, and we're in round nine. Well, Steve, you did hit on the key, though. You said it is a two-part scenario here, and Ar Arnautis has clearly come on, as you indicated, in the second half of this fight. Rounds just zipping by here in Hollywood, Florida, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. <laughs> Arnauda says, nah, nah, he didn't hit me. Yes, he did. Just probably isn't a necessary move on his part. But he keeps firing back. Rango tight defense as he moves in behind the jab as Eddie Mustafa Muhammad implored him. But let's see who goes to the body here. Now they're both head hunting, punching as once. And you make a short sign that this is a good fight. As if we don't know it's a good fight. There are a lot of fighters, Zap Judah, Kasim Uma, who are here. They're all jumping up, yelling, <laughs> gesturing, throwing punches themselves. Yeah. And I'm sure they didn't know who these two guys were before this show, but they're going to know now. That show box. Arno Uda's just streamlining his shots beautifully. He just sees so well. And Eddie Mustafa Muhammad saying you can't move the body, but I think he's doing an excellent job of continually turning Juan Arango. And he puts him there with the left hand. Now Arango's hands are down. And watching Arango, 
you could see he's a natural right-hander. His right hook is a much bigger punch than his straight left. That's very unusual for Southpaw. Mm, good point. Arnaudas continually letting, making Arango swallow those counter shots. Full-blooded shots from Arango sail wide. And Ar Arnaudas gets his respect. That left eye has not closed anymore. Definite swelling above the left eye of Arnaudas as his mouthpiece spits out. He took a solid combination from Arango. Hey, that's an advantage to Arnaudas because that was a big combo by Arango. The mouthpiece comes out and we get a timeout. Steven looked intentional to me. His looked back like was spinning. Us. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. Arnaudas talking to the crowd now when he should be looking for how to avoid some artillery shells here from Juan Arango and Black. Crowd really into this. Half minute to go in round nine. See, I'll tell you, Arango making, making Arnaudas fight. Won't let him rest. Crack from Marango, that left hand before the bell. This is the first of a double header, and coming up next here on Showbox, the new generation from Hollywood, Florida. Heavyweights, Sam the Nigerian Nightmare Peter. 19 and 0, 17 KOs. Went the distance nine weeks ago, his last time out. Wants to get back on the knockout trail. He'll have to do it tonight against a guy who has never been stopped inside the distance, Shovo Pudar. There's the eye. That's Urango, actually. There. It didn't look bad at all, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now look, now you, you, you take that good hook down there to the bottom left hand over the top. Okay, baby. Tenth round, let's see how fresh they are. Both guys full of fire, Steve, and they're spitting it out here. Good round number nine for Arango. Let's see if he can keep his momentum. Arno Uda's trying to get going quicker out of the gate in this tenth round. Now he's getting beaten to the punch right now. Arango continues to press forward in black. Arno Uda's trying to time the slugger from Columbia. Time those rushes. And Nick, what's so great about these kind of fights is that both guys are being tested up there as they've never been tested before. That's clear. You don't know ahead of time how they're going to react. We can watch all the tapes we want. We can see these guys live. It doesn't matter. This is a first time for this kind of thing for both guys. They both responded extremely well under severe pressure. Great point. Steve, it looks for the most part, Arango has abandoned that body attack. Well, part of the reason for that, Arnaudis has not been caught on the ropes for quite a while. Good point, and his elbows are in tight. And through nine, how do you have it, Steve? 86-85, Arnaudis, very close fight. Oh, so, Mike Arnaudis in white on Steve Farhart's card has inched ahead in this fight. But Juan Arango, applying the pressure as usual, in the black, he gets clipped with the right hand from Arnaudas, who continues to turn and set the pace. He wants the movement here, so he is dictating, trying to dictate direction and distance. And you see it there as Durango was short. Ah, there we go. Yeah, he never throw that thing away. Thank you. It's, it's going to ruin a good fight one of these days because a fighter is going to strain his ankle and not be able to continue. It looks like the Colombian could be bleeding on the side of the left eye. It's hard to tell, but let's take a look as Arna Udis has picked up the attack here. Yeah, I think he is cut on the lid. We saw it uh, in the corner just before the bell. Little cut on the left eye lid of Arango. Oh, Arna Udis digs a nice crunching hybrid right hand uppercut. Uh, Hook, but now he's on the ropes, bad place to be as Arango's able, Arango's able to measure him, but now backs off. Another tight round, Steve. 
Where a key is going to be whether the judges give Orango points for these punches when Arnaudis is stationary. He blocks a lot of those big shots. And sneaking in shots of his own. A real good hand speed from Mighty Mike Arnaudis. And now some hot dog action as he tries to throw Orango off stride. Maybe have him blow his cool a little bit and have him run into a shot. Arna Udin's taking shots, but he's keeping very composed and battling back. He's got to outthink this guy. I need the water. Give me the water. Come on, wake up, everybody. Okay, relax. Deep breath. Uh -huh. Listen, what round are we, what round are we in? 11 round. This is the championship round. This is our belt. Let's go get it. More head movement and more jabs. Mucho, mucho jab. Wow, that left hand by Mighty Mike in round nine is what opened the cut. And you know what? It really wasn't a punch. The, the, the punch slid over the eye. And that's where Orango got cut. And then Arnaud is stepping on that pillow. Fortunately, didn't get hurt. 11th round, crowd loves it here in Hollywood, Florida. Wall to wall action. Mighty, Mighty Mike Arnaud is in white. Juan Orango's in black. And what they have is in common, unbeaten records on the line here in a fight that could be too close to call. No knockdowns in the fight, but no stoppages of action. Very few referee breaks. Fabulous work rate from both guys. Great first 30 seconds to the round for Arno Udis. A couple of clear, nice, clean oh, counter punches. Beautiful, nice body shot by Arno Udis. Crucial, Steve, in a fight too close to call, as we said. Snapping off those fiery combinations. He seems to be in Arango's wheelhouse and there to be hit. Man, he's quick. And let's keep in mind, Mike Arno, who has never been past six rounds before. I think he did a little road work. For oh, fight. he could go all night. <laughs> if he wins this fight, I'm nominating him to light the torch in Athens in a couple of weeks. The real marathon runner. But boy, he's done more than just move. He has cracked back. What an evasive action by Arno Udis there. Beautiful. Right. There you go. Step back. A little baby counter combination from him. But he is clearly winning this round, the 11. Rango forgetting about that jab and getting beat to the punch as a result, Steve. And nothing to the body from Arango. Granted, it's difficult to land those shots when your man's moving and he's not on the ropes, but uh, he's not punching to the body. He did land some body shots earlier when Arnudis was moving. I don't see that now. Rango running in the punches once again. Nice body shot from Arnudis. That left hand working well to the body. And it's strange that left, that right hand being held low by Arango trying to protect the body, but he still gets clipped. That's how fast Arnudis is. And there we see the hand speed coming to play again. There have been some close rounds in this fight, Nick. This is not one of them. All Mike Arnaudis this round, round 11. Yeah, probably his clearest round. I would say. Rango picking off those shots with his gloves, but really having difficulty putting offense together here in the 11. And a great fight to try to score, because it's really, what do you like? Do you like the pressure, the big body shots of Arango, or the speed, the jab, and the combinations of Mighty Mike. It's Steve, you, interesting. you hit on the ring generalship. They're both showing it by a guy coming forward and by a guy evading punches so beautifully and countering. That's ring generalship in both corners. Not quite over yet, fellas. <laughs> one Listen, to go. We got one more round. One more round. Give me all you got. Let's go. Let's go. Let it, leave go. it here. 
Yeah, Jack. Beautiful one. Okay, you listening to me. You're keeping them from getting the funny. Mick, you're not letting them set with your jab. Don't let them set on you. Take them both ways, stay in the middle of the ring, keep that jab popping. Mix your, mix your, mix your, mix your. Get up and breathe. Come on, come on, get up and breathe. Let your hands go. Move your head. This is all the marbles. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come Trying to figure out all the marbles in Spanish. Help me, Steve. And I'm half Greek. I should know that. <laughs> Look at the crowd on its feet here in Hollywood, Florida. Beautiful fight, Steve. What Showbox ideally is all about. Two prospects. Like letting it go. Bell, bell to bell, wall to wall. We're in the 12th now. With a round to go, Steve Farhood, how do you have it? 106, 104, mighty Mike Arnold. Oh boy. And Nick, I'll tell you, Arnoudis is Greek, you're half Greek. You've been wonderfully <laughs> impartial tonight. I just want to make that point. Give you credit for that. Didn't even wear blue. <laughs> boy, yesterday talking to uh, mighty Mike's handlers, they said, you know what? Orango is just a brawler. He won't go six rounds with us. Right. They, they were wrong. Boy, they expected him to just run out of juice, but he has continued to come forward in this fight. He's getting out punched here, not outgunned, but he's getting out punched two to one. And how crucial with the 12th round, final round. You take this, you take the fight, perhaps. Oh, that's a slip all the way. On the logo. Rango running into punches, Steve. He slowed down, Nick. I thought he would, and he has. He's eating more shots. And the energy level for Arnaudis is tremendous, given wow. that we're in the 12th. Boy, for him to weather that kind of assault from Rango, I don't know how hard those punches felt, but they looked it from here. He had some bad intentions on every, every shot, certainly the first four rounds. And you can see from the swelling from Arnaudis uh, above the eye that he took some some real punches. And that's, the, you, you mentioned that we haven't seen Santori this whole fight. He just warned Arnaudis for hitting Arango on the back of the head. That's the first warning he's issued the whole fight. Something. Wonderful clean fight also, not just action packed, but totally clean. Man, that punches once and Arnaudis just sticking that fiery combination back. He'll make the fighter a counter here, but he's controlling the action down the stretch. Orango's got to catch up to him, chase him. Steve, you just get him into a firefight here against the ropes. I'll tell you, Mike Arnaudis is, of course, still a several fights away from being classified a contender. But he's gone from being a novice to being a real pro fighter tonight. 15 seconds to go in this fight. It has been an excellent one. That, that move wasn't necessary. And crowd on its feet here. They get a standing ovation. Mutual respect, regard. And Steve, you know, I don't root for anything, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm hoping for a draw because I'd like to see this again. <laughs> yeah, it would be a great rematch, but I, I have Arnaudis edging him by three points. So Arnaudis apparently sharper down the stretch. And that could be the difference here. We'll see what the judges were thinking. We've got a while as they total up, which apparently had close fight. 
Action from round 12. Nick, did, Nick didn't like this stuff, this little hot dog in Byron Udis. And you know what? He got hit when he did that, but he waves his man in, still has the energy to land a nice, crisp right left. If for nothing else, well, there's a slip, clearly a slip. Good call by Santori. And a key call by Santori, because in a close fight, you don't want to have a two-point round when it's not warranted. But if nothing else, you have to be impressed with the fact that these guys had the energy they did, especially Arno Udis, in the 12th round when they hadn't been past six or eight. Uh, we were talking about it yesterday. We said, you know, what do we do if this goes 12? It's, it, we were already writing the book on it, saying it's apparent these guys are going to have to slow down. And they would suffer a big drop-off having never gone eight. Beyond eight, either guy and one guy never going past six. Boy, were we wrong. Yeah. To our delight. They really rang it up here, wall to wall. Steve, these are two prospects, whoever lost it, if any, if either of them lost it. I don't see much fall off to their career. Well, you know, if, if I'm right and Arno Udis indeed did win this fight, hey, I'd see Juan Arango again any time. He's going to be in a lot of exciting fights. Exactly. <laughs> Steve, just officially your numbers. 116, 113 for Arno Udis. I gave him the last two rounds. No knockdowns. Tons of guts here, though, from both fighters. Never stop trying, never stop believing. And there we see the judges sorting this one out. Well, you know, you, a lot of tension, Steve. I'll tell you. You can't, you can't say that just because it's taking a while that there might be, you know, a split decision or some controversy here. But they are taking a while, and that might mean a split decision or a controversy. Maybe my draw. You're right, Steve. Down the stretch, Arno Udis, four of the last six rounds easily, maybe five of the last six. Yeah, well, I, I thought that the second half of the fight would tell the story, and Arno Udis was, I think he maintained his style a little better than Arango did, and a lot of that actually is because of body type. Arango, so heavily muscled, had trouble bringing it the last six rounds. So now the wait finally over, and Damian Pinto, our ring announcer, has the dramatic result. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this one comes to a close, and we go to your scorecards. And here is your decision. Judge Alex Levin scores the fight 115 to 113 for Urango. Judge Rick Bays and Judge Peter Tremetera see this bout at 114 to 114 even. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority draw. A majority draw. The title remains vacant. Why would anybody be disappointed in that, Steve? <laughs> People I want to love see a winner. I don't know. I, I don't love it because I feel Arnaudis did enough to win. And even if he didn't, I would like to have seen a winner because both of these guys deserve to win. Now, neither one wins. Yeah, so curious that uh, on your, in your book and on your card that one guy had Arango winning by two points. Yeah, well, it's not the first time I've differed from the judges. It uh, doesn't make anybody right or wrong, but I thought he dominated the second half of the fight. Maybe dominated is too strong a word. Well, I'm not making any editorial decisions for uh, programming decisions for Showbox, the new generation, but... Hey, can we see this again? <laughs> I don't think anybody lost this one, and they didn't, as they go out unbeaten. Arango going out on the shoulders of his handlers. And we weren't disappointed. One of the best fights we've seen. Oh, indeed. Great pace.
The crowd is into it now as the clock strikes midnight at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida.